doing it right? I'm good. You good? I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good, mate. I'm good. Good. So, yeah. How long have we known each other now? We chatted for like. Probably three, three years, maybe. Three years, yeah. <coughs> I think. Um, I think it was my first year at uni, so that was probably like two and a half years ago, maybe. Something yeah. like that. It feels like longer though, I don't know why. Yeah. So you were uni here studying? Fashion and business. Fashion it's fashion. Business. I, to be honest with you, I don't even know the full name of the course. But <laughs> it's, Three years deep. Yeah, know. honestly. So it's like, it's fashion marketing, business management. Okay. But majority of it is business and marketing related. And then okay. you kind of just like get the fashion bit on the side. Like, okay. Yeah, so it is mostly like marketing. What was your initial law to go into fashion? So, I've always been into like shoes more than like, I, I, if you look back at my old outfits and that, it's like, it's a pair of like really nice shoes and then like a tech fleece or like something just, something bad, yeah. <laughs> so, I think the way it started for me was shoes. I actually didn't even start doing fashion at uni. I started doing criminology and I did that for two weeks and I realised it's not for me. Um, it was actually a girl that I was seeing at the time who was doing fashion and I was kind of like zoning out of my lectures because it was online. I was like zoning out of mine, I was kind of looking at hers and I was like, I'm more interested in what she's doing right now. Um, so then I kind of just started enjoying that and I was like, you know what? I had a meltdown one night, started crying. I was like, this is not for me. So I either do something about it now and switch courses or I'm straight out. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna switch and start doing fashion. And then from there, like, it's just become more of like a passion. Yeah, absolutely. From there, completely. And how do you feel like your course has now influenced you in terms of, because you're, you're TikTok now. You yeah. Said you're a TikToker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I'm five foot. Has that course helped you? Have you actually learned anything from the marketing side of uni? Have you applied that to your TikTok or is it kind of organic? To be honest, um, I think I'd be in the exact same position now if it wasn't for the course. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't think I've really, I mean, maybe like subconsciously I've like applied a few things, but realistically, I, I really don't think that I've actually, I've actually like learned anything. Um, in terms of like building a brand on, on social media, I don't, I don't really think it's helped. Mm. I would say that it probably encouraged things on the back end, sort of like in terms of like consistency and sort of like things like that. But yeah, realistically, I, I don't think, I don't think it's had any impact, to be honest. I feel like getting into it is more, marketing is obviously something you can learn, but I, I, I really believe in like, it's trial and error in a way. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's been a weird time in terms of marketing because it's adapted, with the, like sort of TikTok and Reels, it's changed so much. Yeah. It used to be very kind of rigid and structured and say do things, and now we're looking at content marketing, which mm -hmm. is a relatively new thing in the last yeah. five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So in terms of like your growth and your TikTok, obviously you, what, 115? I think we've just hit like 120 now. 120. 120, yeah. It might even be 125 now, who knows? Amazing, like, man, amazing. Yeah. How have you done that then? Through consistency, perseverance? It's hard. Um, and uh, so probably the question I get the most is like, how do I start TikTok? And like, to be honest, <clears throat> when I started, I never really thought I was actually starting. Like, I, I can't, it doesn't really make sense, but I was just like, if you go back and watch my old videos, I'm not saying anyone should do that. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> if you do, uh, you will see like it is literally just, you have to just have fun, fun with it and just enjoy it. And I think that you will eventually get to a point where you're like, oh, I can monetize this or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if, for probably the last, I've probably been doing it properly for like nearly a year now. And I think there was a time for probably eight of those, eight months out of that year, I was posting five times a day, every single day. Even if I knew the video was bad, I would just make sure I get it out because I know the more people that see it, the more people see your face, yeah. it's gonna help so much. Um, yeah. and I think it is just about yeah. keep doing it, find what you love, find your niche. And the most important thing I think is get your face and your voice out there and your personality because if, if say you're just posting a bit, like for example in fashion, you see people like throwing their outfit on a bed and that's the whole video and it's great and I love the video, but I don't know who you are, I can't really relate to you. I, I can't hear you, I can't see you, I don't know who you are. And I think once you put like videos and like you put that all to a face and a name and everything, I just think it makes it so much easier for people to relate to you and like brands are gonna approach you because they know people like you as a person, not just your content. Uh, and I think that's like one of the most important because people don't even really wanna like, I mean, you invest in brands or whatever, but uh, it's becoming more common to invest in like the people and yeah. like, the face of a brand and like the people behind it. I think that's so underrated as well. Yeah, we were always taught, I was always taught that um, people buy from people. 
Exactly. I think it's yeah. peaking. You know, ever more prevalent now as we see on TikTok and etc. And I think it's worth what you're saying. You can do you so well. Mm. There's always someone else that can make the content better. Yeah. You know? sure. So how would you say you know vanity metrics are obviously important, quotation mark, mm-hmm. in some ways. But it's very easy to get distracted and go, I'm not gonna post because I don't think it's gonna get the most likes, but you really gotta think past that. How did you kinda of overcome that then? You just thought in some ways, fuck it, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it or you completely fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> completely <laughs> fuck it. Especially yeah. to begin with. Um, I didn't really like have a value of like well, I had no idea what views meant. Like, if I got a thousand views, I was like over the moon. It's like a thousand people to see my video. Um, and I think it's so important to get those videos in there that really show who you are as a person. And I sort of like, I started posting like football videos every now and then because like that has nothing to do with fashion. But I love playing football. Like, I, I enjoy making football videos more than I do fashion videos. They'll never perform as well because. I'm known for like making fashion content, but I will enjoy making it so much that yeah, I don't really so care. You've, you've been to that as well, you've done your football shirt videos. Exactly. So I'm trying to I'm trying to like yeah. you know, you're trying to work it somehow. Um and like yeah, there is definitely a link, especially with like everyone going mad for bloke core and stuff at the moment. It's like it, it could definitely work, but Can you explain that a bit more then? Because your style is it's not ne- unique but it's very niche, I suppose. Yeah. What, what do you call it? What? Core, oh, bloke core, yeah. Bloke I'd core. say like that's like one of, uh, this is the thing, I have like four sort of like streetwear styles that I enjoy the most. Okay. So it's like, I love gorp core. Everyone will like laugh at me for wearing like an Arcturx jacket to yeah. the supermarket. I'm like, I don't care, I look yeah, cool though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I look cool. <laughs> and, uh, and then you've just got like sort of like your classic like streetwear, do you know what I mean? Like cargoes, whatever. Um, and then like just, I just, I've always loved football. Like I'm a big Arsenal yeah. fan. Um, you know, come on Arsenal. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like, so I, I just love like, I, I, I don't really care like what it is. There's certain styles I can't pull off, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, but I don't, I don't really say I'll stick to one style. And the problem with that is that you either nail one style and niche and you have that completely down or you kind of like dip your toes in different ones. But because I, I would say I'm still within the streetwear genre, mm. I think that I can kind of get away with it. But if I were sort of like going into like, you know, like mm-hmm. other styles that's just completely not me, then I think at that point you're doing too much. In terms of where you're heading with the TikTok and your goals, you mentioned monetization earlier. Is mm-hmm. that what you're looking to do? Or have you had like an end goal or have you just kind of gone, look, I'm just gonna make content and see where it takes me? So yeah, until like a month ago, it was just, I'm just gonna keep doing this. I can't like, brands can't ignore me forever sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then I had my first big deal, um, which was with size which was like ridiculous for me. Cause you go back and watch my shopping videos, like the first shop I'm in every time is size, just seeing, like, seeing what's there, all of this. So then to have like a, a, a long-term contract with them is like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I'm, I'm definitely at the point now where this is like full time for me. Um, like, like I don't think people understand, like the, the, the social media money is nice, you know? <laughs> it can be nice. And I don't, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm like small. I'm like really, when you look at like other creators, like, I'm, I'm like not big on any level. So I think to, that motivates me because I see people with like millions of followers and I'm like, you must be doing so well. Like people don't, people will look at you and be like, oh, you just made videos, like you're not doing well. Um, but yeah, they're definitely doing well. And yeah. that, that's the goal for me. The power of content is absolutely huge now. I think people don't, they underestimate how far content can take a brand. And especially when it's on, you're called influencers for a reason. I know that word's got a bit of a bad name at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's not my favourite word, but it's not my favourite nah. word. It's what it does for a business. It influences customers to buy a product 100%. or a service. Mm-hmm. So actually, when someone sees something that they like wearing something, it sways that thought pattern, which is really, really interesting. So, in terms of these contracts that you mentioned, and mm-hmm. are you looking just to stay within the fashion sector, or would you branch out? Because there must be a borderline where you kind of go, I wouldn't do that, but it's money. I think that's a problem yeah. sometimes it become tainted because you see these influencers and they start doing things and you think, I liked you, but now you're doing teeth whitening. Yeah, it, it's not worth selling out for for that because the, the damaging the reputation is su- it's such a moral dilemma, you know, like someone's coming with like a ridiculous amount of money for a product that I, that I like, say Primark yeah. come to me and they're yeah. like, right, we'll give you 50K. 
but you've got to promote like all our stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, to be honest, mate, I, I would, I, Primark, if you've got 50K, let me know. <laughs> but um, there are like, I, I do try and stay within fashion or at least like fashion relevant content. Do you know what I mean? I haven't done like a ridiculous amount of, of content, but you know, I've done like weekday size. Um, I'm doing like hair products one at the moment, which I mean, it's like, I mean, you could argue it's fashion, but it's, it's, yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's all about the way you look at the end of the day. Um, so I think, I think that one kind of makes sense. But say, you know, someone came to me to promote, like I've had one recently, um, which was like, it was like swimwear and I was like you know it kind of it kind of is relevant but at the same time it just didn't I don't know something about it didn't feel right and the money was good but it would have looked forced and I know that people see right through that do you know what I mean yeah like, I think it comes down to your personal brand and your personal image which is something I really want to talk about today because that is so important when you're building a social media platform or following having that branding whether it's a company or it's an individual making sure that's outlined. How yeah. have you done that? Have you just kind of gone in your head, this is what I like, can you stay true to that? Or have you actually gone, look, these are my boundaries, this is what, who I want to work with, who I have and who I don't want to work with and stay within that or just take it day by day? It's very day by day for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'll always, no matter what, like I've always, I've kind of been brought up to like always just be true to myself, stay to, to who I am, like on camera, like in my videos, unless it's obvious I'm like playing a character for whatever reason, like I will always like be myself. So when it comes to like, I wanna work with this or this or this, it is like, if I like the brand, I'll work with them. If I don't, I probably won't, unless it's like life changing money, then you know, I might, I, you'd be stupid not to, you know? <laughs> no, nah, nah, listen, that one's different. That, that's a different story. Uh, love you, Clint though. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, it is just very like day by day, do you know what I mean? Like the, I've, I've always been approached by like managers and stuff and um, they're always like, we get these big deals with Apple and all of this. And it's like, as nice as all that sounds, the, f the, the feeling of being like independent and getting those emails pop up on my phone from these brands, like it is literally like, it'll make my day, I'll have an email and it'll be like five foot X size collaboration. Like when that first email came through, stuff like that is just like, I can't explain it, it's, it's a ridiculous feeling. So I don't want to lose that sort of excitement that, that I had and that's something that I'll never get used to, like taking photos with people in public, like that's something I'll never get used to. Like, So I'm just so grateful for it all and I'm kind of just taking it as it comes. But I try not to think about it too much because then I just get overwhelmed because it stresses me out quite a lot. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. of course. I think it's funny you mentioned earlier about how people have like millions of followers and the, the deals they're getting, but I think her name is like Kate. Kate Powell on Instagram, she's only got like 50k and she's doing stuff with Alvi, Louis Vuitton, the well, same thing, Alvi <laughs> Gucci, <laughs> you know, she's doing all these big brands, Celine, etc. Mm. a bit like Kofi, um, but really she's not got that many followers, her engagement is massive. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think that is? Is that because her following is so loyal or do you think, is it a numbers game or is it more about the community that you're building and the influence you have? How do you measure that? It's a good question. I think that, um, I mean, I'm not 100% sure how brands look at things like that. And I'd be interested to know if brands even actually care about engagement a lot of the time. I think a lot of them will, will just look at followers and go, they've got a good following. Because I see people now who I know have like about 200K on Instagram, 300K, but they're getting like a thousand likes a photo and they're still doing like ridiculous deals. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I think having, I think brands can tell when you have a loyal following, but I also, when it comes to numbers and engagement, I'm not sure they care too much about that. In terms of like working with brands like LV and stuff, I think it mainly comes down to just your image. Um, what kind of content you actually post, yeah. who you are, have you got a good reputation, stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely hard. part of the customer experience. And from my perspective, when we look at um, working with somebody, it's very much about if the customer finds a product via an influencer, it's part of that journey. So yeah. They associate with them, and then if it's if you know if the reputation's bad, then from now on it's a fighting battle. Yeah, so if you yeah, got a really yeah, good yeah. reputation, really good influencer, then um, we look at a thing called lifetime value, which is LTB. We won't bore you with it, but you know, customer experience is all, all part. Of oh, 100%. And, um, no, it's really interesting. So, what's the next couple of weeks for you? What's going on the pipeline? Anything exciting? <laughs> <content -wise? laughs> um, yeah, so my clothing brand literally bulk will arrive either tomorrow uh, or Saturday. Can you some more details about that? Yeah, so it's a first drop. Okay. I think it will sell out. 
hopefully it'll sell out. It will sell out. It, it should sell out. Um, it, it should sell out. And we've, we've kept it limited because for me, like, <clears throat> I'm not taking it too seriously. Um, it's always been a dream to have my own brand. And I just think like, rather than going all in heavy, I sort of just test the water, see what happens. And uh, obviously me being like a, like a face on social media, um, uh, people are more invested in me than the product, but that's not the way I want it to be. I want it to be the brand lives on its own um, because the, the quality is like something that we've put a lot of time into. Like we've had so many samples, like so many manufacturers. So it is just, uh, it is just, it's coming soon. What's, what's the coming vibe soon. you're going for with the brand? What's it called as well? So it's called Five Foot Experiments. Yeah. And it literally is five foot just experimenting basically <laughs> and the, the original plan was to kind of every each drop is basically an experiment um and the first one we played it quite safe just some like simple hoodies tees just just to kind of get the brand name out there um i think that will sell well because it is most people can wear a hoodie and a t-shirt it's not like something completely outlandish so it's, it's quite safe um but from from like experiment two it's, it is going to be like just experimenting with different materials, designs, cuts, you know, um, just more like weird, weird things. And it's just a bit of fun at the end of the day. I think the TikTok and the following is a huge advantage to begin with. hundred percent. I couldn't do it without, yeah. like it would be impossible. Yeah. Um, especially making like really outright, like, you know, I see on Instagram, like get DMs every day. I'm starting a brand, I'm starting a brand. And like, it's so cool that people are starting brands, but it's so hard if you don't have like any sort of influence, I hate that word, but you know what I mean. Um, so what, what advice would you give to somebody that was looking to start a brand? I think it, it depends who you are because mm. it's it's not easy for everyone to get in front of a camera and like put themselves out there like that. I know that you know a lot of introverted people aren't going to want to do that. Um, if you can, then in my opinion, that's the best way to do it. I see a lot of brands. Um, there's one in particular. I don't know if you heard of Bad, bad Handwriting. It's this guy called Benjamin. Um, you sent me a hoodie a while back, a cool hoodie. I think you'd like it actually. Okay. And um, put me on. I'll put you on. I'll put you on. <laughs> but but the way he does it is he's. I mean, I've seen a few people do it, but he's just one that comes to mind. And it is him literally starting from day one. And he will basically vlog his days, um, be like, "Yo, day one of starting a starting a global brand, whatever." And it's just him like going through the process of how he started it and all of this. And he's like just done a couple of drops, I think. Um, and even just that, like just being completely transparent. Um, because people actually want to see the behind the scenes of starting a brand because like anyone can start a brand but once you get into it it's not as easy as it seems you know you've got to find the right manufacturer all of this and you're kind of just showing the whole process just doing it a bit different I think is, is the way to go and, and if you are someone that doesn't want to put themselves out there like that then I think you need to use someone else me if you're paying well uh, <laughs> to, to like kind of put your brand out there because you, you can't just print something on a t-shirt and put it out there anymore it, it, it's not unless you have like a crazy following it isn't just going to work any, anymore yeah really. people need to buy into the brand and the story behind it 100 percent. i think a lot of the time when you, you're buying a bit of clothing you like to have some rhetoric you don't want to be like oh i just saw it and bought it yeah i think we'll, we'll wrap it up there man 100 i think that's perfect for me but nice one for coming on. um, appreciate, appreciate it. you mate nice if you don't already follow i'm five foot on i'm five foot I'm not actually fine. Actually maybe, maybe I am. You know what? We'll, we'll leave. The, it's a mystery. <laughs> no one, no one's gonna know. <laughs>